What's up guys, my name is Stefan Ash and today I have a practical G pose guide for you. In this video today, we're going to actually go over the G pose menu and I'm going to show you how I got this screenshot right here that will be the thumbnail of this video and show all the sprouts and new players how to use G pose and why G pose is important with all the new expansions and things coming out. Sometimes you want to highlight areas and other places that are really beautiful in game. So I'm going to show you how to go from zero experience to G pose to a beginner's basic G pose so you can create cool fun screenshots for you and your friends so let's just jump right into it you're gonna go over to actions and traits and then extras and you can go to G pose another way that you can actually do this is if you type in the party chat just backslash G pose and that will give you access to G pose right there. Starting in the menu, the top part right here is shortcuts. The first one is to face the camera and they also give you the shortcut button on controller or keyboard. The next button we see here is enable lighting camera. This will turn on and off your brightness. We all adjust this actually in this side menu right here. So I wouldn't worry too much about it right there. Enable all motion. That's if you want to stop your character halfway through a motion in order to capture a certain pose, target motion and stop time and weather. I highly recommend to have this turned on only because when you find the right lighting, you don't want to lose it as the sun's moving. So I like to keep that stop. So when I find the correct position and the correct time in game, I don't lose that lighting. The next thing is toggle battle effects on and off. That's just when you're using battle effects, you can actually see them. It's not just the move. We're gonna move down over here to general settings, camera position. This is just a way to adjust the camera. Um, we also have to turn the camera, which I don't really ever use. I mean, you can, uh, it can be pretty fun if you can figure it all out, but I specifically am not a big fan of side shots or anything like that. The next one is manual brightness adjustment. Think of this as like exposure. You can turn the brightness on and off, which is super helpful. I like to use as much good sunlight as possible. I don't want to overexpose the photo. So doing it in the middle of the day and angling your character where the brightness is hitting them in a great way is better in my opinion, just like in real life, how you kind of want to use real sunlight rather than exposure. We will we'll turn it up a little bit. I'm going to go over everything first and then we'll go back and I'll actually create a screenshot for you. Color filter. Think of this just like Instagram. This is just another way to apply like really interesting effects. A lot of people here use strengthen effect as far as i can recall there's really no way to lessen it like kind of turn up the strength and the weakness of the effect i actually quite like bright one bright two um in certain settings bright four is really nice that's a really nice uh filter screen effect is going to be the green uh that will change like the top layer if you want to think of it that way uh let's see one of my favorite screen effects is Sakura. Uh, you just have to give it a second to go and it's going to drop a little rose flower petals. This is one of my favorite screen effects. Enable depth of field. This is just if it's blurry in the background. If you see the characters to my left, you can see that they go in and out depending on the depth of field. So the lower the depth of field, the blurrier the background, the higher the depth of field, the non blurry the background. We also have enable manual focus. This is just to focus yourself. If you want yourself a little sharper and the background less blurry or more blurry, uh, I don't really ever use this. I just keep it off and it does it all for me. Limb darkening. This is a little bit more niche. I don't really ever use this, but if you turn this on, you see the outside getting a little bit darker. You can change how the darkness goes from oval to circle. So I'll turn it on really high and we'll use the second one. See, it's more of an eyeball. That's more of a circle. Uh, you can also give it different colors. Again, you can play around with all this to your heart's content. I don't really ever use it, so I keep that off. Going down to effect frames. This gives your character an effect. All you simply have to do is hit deep freeze and then hit play, and you'll see that it gives your character the freeze status. You can pause it, go on to petrification, pyretic. This can be kind of a cool one to do some really cool screenshots. Sleep, 
she's sleepy. Wet attire is just that. It's uh, if you were in the rain or your character was in weather that was rainy or wet, that's what you would look like. Frames can be pretty cool. Uh, you can mess around with these. Uh, picture frame, instant camera. I actually like cinema. I feel like it gives it a really cool movie effect. Um, there's torn, wall frame, ornamental border, wanted <laughs> elite mark. That's kind of cool. Quite like the cinema. So that's what we'll be going for today. Brightness. Okay, so for here, this is where it gets really interesting. If you have no previous experience with lighting in real life, uh, because I do content creation and sometimes I'm on camera, I have a really basic understanding of it, but it does help. So jumping into this, you see that we have three different lamps. We have, I call them lamps because that's what it reminds me of. You have lamp one, lamp two, and lamp three. This is different than manual brightness as depending on where your camera is, is where the light's going to start from. So if we're just right in front of her and we turn on one, you see that, oh, let me turn off this wet attire real quick because I'm not a fan of that. Let me turn off that. Okay, you see light one. You can kind of see though that she's a little overexposed. And if I turn around and zoom out, you can see that the lamp right there or the light is kind of circled right there in front of her where I initially put it down. So it doesn't move. Once you turn it on, it stays in that place. So with this, in a lot of lighting and a lot of basic lighting setups, they have what they call a three-point lighting system. Very rarely, if you've ever watched anything on TikTok or Instagram, you see that they have a ring light and their face is kind of overexposed, kind of like what's happening here. But with the three-point lighting system, you create light, but indirectly. So then it's highlighting the features, but not overexposing the face kind of basic understanding is you would do one here to the side so now if we zoom in on her we see that she just has light in the left side of her face with that it creates a little bit of a shadow so in order to lessen that shadow you would come up to the top right and now the shadows lessen so her face is exposed but it's very different than when we initially had light in front of her her face is brightened, but it's not overexposing. I'm actually gonna turn down the manual brightness here a little bit. There we go. So you can see her, but um, it, it's gonna be a little difficult because I'm wearing all white and my hair is white. That kind of makes the hair look a little overexposed. Um, but if you notice like down here, she's not overexposed in the legs or the jacket. And the last part of the lighting is to have kind of like a halo effect on the character. So you can come right here and right in the back of her, right up top. So that kind of creates like a more of a 3D effect. So it's brightening up the background and brightening up the backside of her without being too close. You can play with these and adjust these how you want. In lighting one, lighting two, lighting three, this just is relative to lamp one, lamp two, lamp three, and there's different types. If we just zoom out here, we can see the light that's right over there, that's lamp one. If we go to type one, it kind of lessens the light. Just think of it in terms of brightness, and we can kind of see the adjustment on her, lamp two, lamp three. So lamp Type three is going to be the brightest that you can have the light. And you can also adjust the brightest by how close you put it to them. So to the player. So if I turn this off and I go like as far as I can go or kind of hide it behind, you can see that it's kind of shining on that pillar instead. Or you can go super close and put it really bright, but then go to type one and give it a much lighter effect. So we're kind of getting the same thing here. There's just so many multiple ways to adjust this. And this is kind of the really fun part. I am going to go back out to two, put it a little closer, keep it kind of brighter. I'm going to turn down this because I'm going closer with the light. I'm going to, um, I'm going to put this back to normal here. You can see the incredibly big difference that bright one makes. I'm actually going to go back and adjust this to maybe one. Let's see, two, 
yeah, I like bright four, but it just kind of overexposes my ears. So as you can see, it's kind of um, blanketing out my ears, which, you know, will be okay for this screenshot. So after lighting, we're gonna move down to character lighting. This is just the lighting on your specific character, the exposure. So you can turn this up and on. I'm gonna go just about 50%, I think is my favorite. Um, I quite like the little shadow that's happening on her face. It gives a little dimension. We're gonna go down to motion settings. This is for the character to walk forward, walk backwards. Again, you're just gonna click and then choose press play. This is if you just want to take a specific type of screenshot. I'm gonna keep it on, pause, lip movement. That's if your character's talking. So it looks like they're talking. This is really cool for content creators because it can actually have your character be the first show up on the video and you can talk over your character as if your character was talking. I know a couple of content creators who actually do that. I'm gonna pause that, open emote list. This lets you kind of pick emotes depending on which ones you want. A really cool one to play around with if you want some really cool looking stationary screenshots is Battle Stance. The Battle Stance have like a little bit of a play, like it kind of does like a full on movement and you can stop it just by enabling all motion, disabling all emotion. So I'm using uh, enable target motion, which is for my character R2. And just by pressing R2 on my controller, I can stop her halfway through any of the emotes and you can kind of pick your favorite stance. And I really recommend if you're gonna do a stance G pose, uh, then to do the G pose first, to do the actual emote and then adjust the lighting. Cause if you can see, the lighting kind of affects depending if her head's tilted, if she's turned, anything like that. So you wanna highlight different areas. Let's see her battle stance. This is the blue mage right here's battle stance and every job has a different battle stance. So you can see how you can really mess around with all of this. I'm gonna try to catch her right as she's opening up. So something like that. Quickly going to stop and start to see if I can find anything I like. So there's nothing there that's kind of calling to me. How about a victory one? Oh, that's kind of cool. So let's watch the whole thing. Nope, that's a cool one, but not technically what I'm looking for. Let's look at, so sometimes if you wanna change pose, you have to stop the emote in order to do some other ones. So like change pose, it doesn't look that like the blue mage actually has different poses they can do. Uh, most of the battle jobs do. And you can also change the expression that's happening. So I kinda want her to wink left and I want her to smile, maybe be amazed while she's doing it. Let's see, maybe a grin. Don't like the grin. Let's find another smile. Let's do... So I actually kinda like this pose right here. The last thing is character display settings. You're gonna be able to decide who's in your G pose and who's not. If I zoom out, we can hide everybody, including yourself. You can have yourself only. You can do self and NPCs. So you don't have players running through your G pose all the time. Self and NPCs, con controlled character only, non-controlled characters only, PC only, companions, pets, which I don't have any out, NPCs only, and enemies only. So I'm just going to do self and NPCs only. I like the kind of uh, look it kind of gives. And down here, you can actually save the camera settings and save the lighting settings. 
which I will do. The last part is the load settings, which you can load your position, zoom, angle of view, and roll angle, as well as your lighting positions, character lighting, and your manual brightness settings. This makes it really easy if you like a specific setup that you can access that setup every single time pretty quickly when you open GPOS. So I'm gonna do this right here. I quite like this. We kind of set it up. Um, I'm just gonna change this light over here. Number three, I think is just a little too close. So I'm gonna zoom it out a little bit just to take the harshness off. There you go, that's a little better. So when I'm setting up a G pose, I wanna think about what I'm trying to highlight. What is the purpose of the screenshot? So I'm actually gonna use this screenshot in the thumbnail. This is gonna be my thumbnail for the video. I quite like the jacket being highlighted, the legs and the staff that I'm using for Blue Mage. One of my favorite spots for G posing is Kugane and that's just because of all of the colors. So you can really build a background pretty easily. Um, I think it's really nice in order to have opposing colors. Oh, there's a little sightseeing. So once you have everything set up how you like it, you can zoom in quite far. I'm gonna just put her, because I'm using this as a thumbnail, I'm putting her off to the right in order for me to put words here on the left. On PC, you can just hit Alt F1. That will take a screenshot. Uh, you can use the snapping tool, which is on your PC or on Apple, they have a picture tool as well. For consoles, you can take a screenshot just by pressing the options button that will take you to the console settings and hit screenshot and use it that way. You can then edit this and add the words in any post edit thing. If you wanna just take screenshots for your friends or party or for your FC, then <clears throat> you can make this a little bit nicer, but because it's gonna be a thumbnail for me, I need her to be on the corners and so I can't really highlight too much of the background because I'm going to need to put words there. I would also play around with uh, different angles, ups and downs. I think a lot of people get stuck with just doing like in front, but you can do some really cool things. I want to thank you all for watching the video. If you learned anything or got any value out of this video, then make sure to limit break three that subscribe button down below. If you want to connect with me on any of my social medias, then you can go into the link tree down below in the description box and that will show you how to support the channel or join my public discord. If you want to keep watching Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.